Hello, my name is Johnny Madge. I'm an olive oil taster and I do olive oil tours in Italy and I've been doing so for 11 years. And my mission is to teach people how to use oil as simply as possible with the simplest dishes possible so they really get what a wonderful ingredient it is. I'm meeting Johnny at Colle Etruschi in Lazio, north of Rome. It's November and it's harvest time. This olive variety is called Canino. You want to pick beautiful green, fresh olives, maybe not all green, but certainly most of them green, to produce the freshest oil possible. And get into the mill as quickly as you possibly can is the most important thing. So certainly on the same day. Then the olives are washed in the mill and they should be using clean water. Then they're crushed in a nice, clean, stainless steel crusher, no longer using those beautiful old granite wheels. And then they are stirred and warmed, basically. So when we say cold extracted or cold pressed, it doesn't mean cold, it means uh, 27 degrees centigrade, 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And then it goes through a centrifuge, which takes the place of the old presses, the smelly old dirty presses. Now we use stainless steel centrifuge. Another centrifuge to get rid of all the water. And then this beautiful, beautiful oil comes out. And then the good people, in my mind, filter. And so I want to now show you one of the simplest dishes I can think of, which I got from my mother-in-law, who comes from the south of Italy where they have wonderful cannellini white beans. The point about this is that when you've made it, you just want to pour gallons of oil on the beans because it's so delicious. And there are basically three ingredients, white cannellini beans, garlic and sage. So we have to put lots of oil in here, okay? Don't drizzle, pour lots and lots of this beautiful oil, which two or three days ago was still on the trees. Doesn't it look delicious? Just a few leaves of sage. If you love sage, put a lot. If you don't like sage, use bay. This normally takes about five minutes to bubble the, the garlic in the oil so that the flavors from the aromatics get into the oil. It's already beginning to bubble now. So these are cannellini beans that have been overcooked. It doesn't matter, don't panic if they're overcooked. And don't be careful about the amount of water that goes in with them because the water is going to help make them more creamy. And here this can go on for 5-10 minutes when it looks like almost mayonnaise is forming around the beans and you know you're ready. That's it, we're ready. Okay? Yeah. So, this is the olive oil from the mill in Blera from this wonderful um, cooperative called Kolje Truski. People who I've known for years, people I love very much. And this oil was literally on the trees like two or three days ago. And you can almost tell from the color when I put it on the beans. So watch. So the point is, this is like fresh herbs in liquid form. And it lifts dishes and brings out the flavors. So this oil is quite um, bitter? It's a little bit bitter and pungent, but with the hot beans, it's magical. Oh my god, it's delicious. And with the oil that's just been made, it's really, really special. Mm. The key is to be liberal. Absolutely. Don't drizzle, pour. So what do you look for in olive oil, Johnny? Um, it sounds banal, but really what we're looking for is freshness. It's like when you buy an apple or a lettuce, you want it to be green and crunchy. And obviously olive oil isn't crunchy, but it's this freshness that we're looking for. And so many oils out there don't have fresh quality. So it's actually really, really simple. 
and one of the descriptors of this freshness is freshly cut grass. So this is a very fruity, soft tomato oil from the south of Campania, the south of the Amalfi Coast. And this is the one that we've just been watching, we watched them make it, and this is a little bit bitter and pungent and is great with beans and what I call hot proteins like steak or fantastic or bruschetta. So when we taste olive oil in competitions, we'll be using blue glasses, but I think it's nice for you to see the color. And actually, I think it's nice for a chef or anyone who's eating and using olive oil to see how beautiful an oil can be. It doesn't necessarily mean anything. Obviously, you don't want to buy oil when it's orange or really, really yellow. This one that's just been made is almost fluorescent green. Look at that. But you can have oils as beautiful as that that aren't necessarily good. So don't judge from the color. But remember, if you want to play with it on a dish, this is a very pretty oil to play with. So the reason why I brought this one on along is because it just has this, it's like summer. It smells of tomato and even basil. The other day I was making a pesto, crushing up basil leaves and it, and it had this smell. In Spain, they use these sherry glasses for smelling and tasting oil because if you're clumsy like me, it's great because you can do a lot of this and it doesn't go anywhere. And you get this beautiful, beautiful, fresh hit. It smells of Italy. So to taste it, we put some oil in our mouths, move it around, and we make these stupid noises. And then we breathe out of our noses to get all the perception of all the smells and flavors that there are in these wonderful oils. And then you breathe out of your nose. It sounds complicated and weird, but actually, if you think about it, if you have a cold and you're eating food and try to taste coffee or beer or whatever, you don't really get flavor because this is not happening. So that's why we do this stupid noise and then breathe out of our noses. So that was easy and delicious and lovely. This is going to be a bit harder and I may cough and cry and splutter. Let's see. Remember, when an oil is as intense as this, it's fantastic with food. Hmm. Even from the smell, I could tell that it was going to make my eyes water. It's got this incredible pepperiness. It's almost like chewing on green peppercorns. And as I said, it's a bit like a very tannic red wine. On its own, it's kind of hard to do this. But then when you have it with food, it, it, it just transforms the food into something else. Most of us actually go to supermarkets or maybe even delicatessens to um by olive oil, what should we be looking for? It is very confusing. It's almost worse when there are more oils. Um, what you should really avoid is buying olive oil in clear glass bottles because the sun destroys oil. So if you notice these good oils are in dark glass because it protects the oil from the sun. The sun will make it go rancid within just a few days. So buy oil in dark glass and maybe tins it's impossible for you to understand how good the tin is, so who knows, but dark glass is the best. If they tell you when the oil was harvested, that's a good thing. I wouldn't necessarily pay any attention to the sell-by date because if it's a recently made oil, that's the best thing you can find. Yes, it's good to have fresh seasonal oil, but that this stuff is so fresh and green that it as it were, preserves itself for at least 18 months, if not two years. So don't worry. If you haven't opened the bottle of oil, it will last 18 months. Should one buy olive oil at all from a supermarket? <laughs> um, there are supermarkets in England that have some very, very good olive oils. Okay. Um, and, the, and the indicator is price? Unfortunately not. There are some oils out there that are very expensive that are are not great. Is it better if you live somewhere like, like um, America um, to buy local olive oil rather than imported olive oil? Um, 
the in California they make some great oil but there's so much wonderful oil that comes from Italy and Spain and Portugal and other countries so in America they have a few varieties but the varieties that we have in the whole world are almost infinite so it's great just as you do with wine to try all sorts of different varieties from different countries from all over the world um, tell me about cooking with olive oil should one actually use it or as a cooking oil or simply a condiment at the end yeah so I actually I, I would love to know where this myth comes from people say I should not cook with extra virgin olive oil it is complete rubbish you can take extra virgin olive oil up to 207 degrees centigrade 405 de degrees Fahrenheit before it smokes so that's very high if you go to Greece they only use extra virgin olive oil I only use extra virgin olive oil to even make chips with so don't listen to people when they say don't use extra virgin olive oil if I were to buy cheap oil I would buy Greek oil because Greek oil when it's not perfect is great for cooking with and it doesn't have what we call invasive defects whereas bad Spanish oil can be very have this cat pee thing Johnny says don't be distracted by Italian sounding names on a bottle. Italian sounding means Carapelli, Bertolli, Sasso, Coricelli. These are companies that were Italian and then they were bought by a company called De Olio. So we call it's like with fashion too, like Gucci and you know, there are people who are selling stuff that sounds Italian but is made somewhere else. You have to imagine this oil, it's almost like adding herbs, as I said, in a liquid form. So Put on a lot. Don't drizzle. Pour. Doesn't it look beautiful? 